let's jump into an industry that we all care a lot about because it's important to Charlotte. I mean, Charlotte's the second largest financial services center in the United States. The first panel talked some about passporting and what, what it meant, um, and we understanding how important it is for the UK to win passporting in the negotiations. Um, John, Jonathan, can you talk some, if, for US companies and especially our financial services institutions that have come to London as their gateway to Europe, if passporting isn't universally um, continued, uh, what impact is that going to have on the financial institutions and other US companies that have, are headquartered in the UK, and, and what's the impact of that going to be? Okay, I mean, passporting is, you know, being be no doubt about it, um, Jeff, passporting is going to be a very, very key issue um, here. It is critically important that uh, in the negotiations the, the UK government gets this passporting issue um, sorted out, and sorted out quite quickly, actually. I think Morgan Stanley have already indicated that, um, you know, they'll be relocating, I think, 2,000 employees or something like that to, I can't remember whether it was Frankfurt or, or Paris. Um, but certainly getting passporting sorted out. In other words, getting the, this license to operate and sell services um, across Europe sorted out um, very, very early on. That is, that is going to be um, critical. To, what, what does this mean? To put this into context, uh, the UK handles almost 40% of global currency trades. 40%. And, and for the UK, read London. So... That this is going on here in London. Um, that is how important to global currency trades London is. Um, on any one day, London trades more dollars than New York. So that is how significant an issue this is. So it's significant for the UK, it's significant for Europe, and it's significant um, for the States as well. So if we don't get passporting sorted out, which, as I say, I think it's inconceivable that we won't, and I think it is one of the major issues that we have to get sorted out. But if we don't, what does that mean? There's been some speculation about it, inevitably because people want to assume that this is going to be sorted out. Um, it's the sort of thing that isn't really getting much airtime um, here in the UK. I think what you've got to remember is that London, in particular within the UK, is set up for financial services. Um, it, there is no other neat solution within Europe which is going to deliver the sort of result that uh, US financial institutions want. And this is not just about being next door to your competitors, it's about being alongside um, your client base. And for those of you who visit London regularly, and Jeff, you're obviously a, a regular visitor here, you, you know because you see it and you can see the way the infrastructure is, is set up. The buildings that we have here, the access to resources, the access to people and to headcount. Other countries don't have that, and they're going to have to they're going to have to sort that out pretty quickly if they're going to genuinely compete. If therefore the UK doesn't get passporting sorted out, I think what will have to happen is that some sort of it's going to have to be more than a brass plate. Um, but it will. My guess is it will be a relatively nominal um, headquartered representation in probably either Paris or Frankfurt. It's not going to happen in Dublin, I don't think, much as Ireland would like to see that, because Dublin and Ireland just do not have the resource, the access to the human capital um, that they need. I don't, however, see large financial institutions, whether they be US financial institutions or from elsewhere in the world, decamping en masse to, say, Paris or, or Frankfurt. I think some people will have to go because of those licensing issues, but uh, the large back office operations are going to remain here in London. Francesco, there are over 6,000 banks in the United States, but when we look at the United Kingdom, your market has always been dominated by a handful of very large banks and other financial institutions. Um, does Brexit create an opportunity for the British government to create a regulatory regime that's more favorable to smaller banks and financial institutions? Well, there's a potential that that could happen, yes. Um, there certainly has been a, a strong voice from the challenger banks, uh, both to the Treasury Select Committee within the UK Parliament and also in response to a recent Competition and Markets Authority investigation into the operation of retail banking and banking for SMEs. 
in the UK that has encouraged just that. At the moment, the strong view from a lot of the challenger banks is that there are some barriers to entry that make it very difficult for them to sort of seek to grow and expand their businesses. Um, some of them are having to do with capital requirements, taxation, and other sorts of issues of, of that sort of thing. Now, the thing is, I think a lot of the financial rules that have been put in place by the European Union actually were probably driven by the UK. So a lot of it's been informed by that. Certainly with regards to a lot of the prudential regulation that was put in place after 2008, a lot of that was driven from the UK. A lot of the models and, and, and the sort of regulatory framework that's in place for financial services has a UK sort of color to it, if you like. So yes, there is every opportunity for the UK to then begin to strike its own kind of course. But part of the issue with regards to then wanting to have access to greater financial services across the European Union and you talk about this issue of passporting rights, um, it may be that, you know, in order to hold on to certain sorts of passporting rights, it may be that the UK will have to sort of follow a very similar regime as what is in place in the, in, in the European Union. Uh, at the moment, you do have these sort of third country type arrangements where, provided you have a regulatory system and approach that's very similar to what is recognized in the EU, then you're allowed to do business in the EU. So it may be that the UK will have to sort of pick and choose the types of regulatory framework or changes it wants to put in place that you know it feels can benefit consumers and allow challenger banks to, to be more competitive within the UK market. Uh, but it will be very much sort of part of an iterative process, I suppose, in sort of seeing what, if any, kind of passporting rights the UK has and what ultimately that looks like in the future.